Hello and welcome to the Gavin Few Rangers podcast. My name is Colin McNuff and as always I'll be your host for this evening. Joining me today to discuss all things Rangers, um, including a, a, a new appointed manager, Graham Campbell. Graham, how are you doing? Good, Colin. Thanks, Thanks for asking. Thanks. How are you doing? Ah, I'm alright, I'm alright. Um, better than I was uh, this time Sunday evening, uh, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I think I'm the same. So... Um, a lot to talk about uh, for the aftermath of the past regime, the looking ahead to the new regime. But just quickly, Hero Van Van Bronckhorst, new Rangers manager, 17th permanent manager. Before we get into it too, um, too much, too, before we get into the real deal, got a reaction. Who, what Rangers manager do you will be like, or who do you see him being like? <sighs> Good question. I think, I mean, gut reaction. That I'll be honest, it was it wasn't my top choice. I think we're in a very specific position just now. Obviously, we've been left in a good place, so I think it would be a very specific manager that would need to come in, depending on somebody maybe coming in the summer, for example. Um, however, I still think he's a good appointment. I think he'll. I, I do. I do have a feeling he's he's going to do well. Just obviously watching his early interviews, press conferences, the way he conducts himself. I think that's how you would expect um, someone of his kind of calibre to do so. And very much the, the Dutch the Dutch way of thinking, I think, is probably the expectation. So I think he's been questioned on this, but there's there's no doubt the, the Dutch in, in particular have a very specific way of thinking very specific way of working, their tactics, the way they look at the game. So I would expect him to to be along that kind of same mould as I'm not saying he's going to be like an advocate, he's obviously a completely different character, but obviously in terms of comparing the Rangers managers, as the Dutch contingent goes, you're going to imagine he's he's going to have that kind of similar way about him, right? Well, leaves me on him uh, uh, this week's snippet of Rangers history because I, I wish Van Bronckhorst every success as Rangers a caretaker manager also we take great pride in having so few permanent managers in fact our, our club is good old 17 permanent managers it's phenomenal it's um, but you don't see very many uh, clubs in world football never mind European football like that Rangers first ever caretaker manager Graham Rangers legend Willie Thornton. Well, be, between David White leaving on the 27th of November 1969 and William Waddle taking over on the 8th of December 1969, Willie Thornton stepped in and he had two games in charge. And I tell you what, he won both games. He's to, the, to this day the only Rangers manager, caretaker, or permanent to have a 100% record. And um, you know that's my that's my little history snippet for this week. But I feel we are a legend of the statue of Willie Thornton. I've found a couple of articles about his in his Rangers career and um, managerial career afterwards, and the service he, he paid the Rangers afterwards. He was actually club secretary, and he acted as one of the club guides right into the late eighties. Nice. So, yeah. There's nice. my, there's my head that. I think, um, yeah, kind of aware of some caretaker managers, as in way before my lifetime. Um, he was one of them. I think more into my own lifetime, I'm very, very aware, specifically in the last uh, decade, and a bit longer, I'm thinking, when Durant was caretaker against Unferman, for example. But um, we've obviously had a few caretakers step in, especially over the last decade, and you're talking about Marty and McDowell and Stuart McCall's a kind of interim, so it's been rocky. It would be nice to have, obviously, Gio's our 17th permanent. It would be nice to see him here for a while, but that's not going to happen if he's successful. He's, you know, the English Premier League always seems to call, and that's what we need to accept and going forward, and I think 
at this point in time, where we're at, I honestly think maybe three to four years we'd be doing well to keep a manager for. However, at the same time, it will mean they're successful, so it's double-edged sword, right? It is, man, and that's not just our position. I think there's world football now as well. It's it kind of, it's like a four or five year cycle, isn't it? It's hard to maintain success um, in terms of actually winning the trophies um, beyond a, a four year period. Uh, it's remote football, I'm afraid. But anyway, that's a topic for a whole, whole other pod. If you're going well about the Integrity is a. So Sunday, how shape was that? I think the like, I'm going to be honest. Probably the less said about it, the better. Um, just I think we're all thinking the same. What what was that when Martin Boyle scored a hat trick within what the first half hour? Or it was just no fight. There just just seemed nothing there. It it was just. Um, it was just an awful experience standing there. Um, that first half was just mind-blowingly bad. I think the, there's nothing we could pull from other than the other than the, the goal we scored. That's, that's about it. I mean, that kind of came for nowhere, let's face it. So, uh, it was terrible. Uh, the, after the first goal, um, I think Martin Boyle had, was, had a lot of... Uh, <laughs> No chances, but he was, he was going a bit dangerous. And my dad turned around and said to me, he was like, this is reminiscent of Ivan Sproul. Um, and that 3 0 game, like way back to, was, I think it was. And we got that. But, um, it's, I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, you shouldn't be surprised the way Rangers were playing this season. To be honest, I was surprised. I don't know if, like, as poor as we've been, we've been terrible in spells throughout games. We've made poor decisions. We've, Organised, but I was never expecting in a million years we'd see any sort of performance like that this season. No, I I completely disagree when people are saying, oh, we've went by enough games, this is going to happen. That wasn't going to happen. I think that was a direct consequence of uh, Gerard leaving. The, <clears throat> um, I think actually in hindsight as well, when I look at the team we put out, of course, it's normal you want to put your best players out. However, in hindsight, I totally think that a more uh, fringe 11 would have done a better job. Uh, players who are trying to fight for their place, trying to impress a new manager. But now our strongest 11, um, I think actually looking at it, it's, just, it's almost as if they down to it, it was just a horrible thing to watch. It just... I don't care about the the games up until that point or what anyone wants to say. We've not seen that level of performance this season, regardless of how poor we may have been in other games or regardless of how many other games we've went behind, we've not seen that level of performance. Well, obviously, we're not going to talk about the, the game they like play because I think that's just... Mm. But I think the big turning point for me is... Why I'm I'm not necessarily yeah I Gerald to even effort as a party in it, but I, the question I, I have is how did the players allow them to to lose so much well, allow themselves to lose so much heart and that's concerning for me because there's I know what you're saying um, by French players I'm guessing you're maybe talking about like Bart or Bassi or Ali or somebody who can come in at the start of the I think um, throughout the team, the core, um, the closer the team, and what we're talking about big name players are Davis, Cavanier, Vega, Morelos, and um, how as a unit do they let themselves just be so armed and so lackluster and lack of fight? Yeah, I think, I think. Maybe if a few players are feeling like that, it's probably somewhat easy to bring the rest of the, the dressing room down. That's all I can think of. I think when the last time I was on, when we spoke about um, some of the players that might have came because of Gerard, and I don't know whether they've taken taken a specific slight to him leaving. And I think 
my personal opinion at the time. Obviously, it doesn't mean anything now. My opinion of the time is Lampard might be a good fit because he's that kind of name that would have come in. He's got a good managerial experience and that might have um, been something for those players that maybe came for Gerard, for example. Now it's a complete shot in the dark. could be a load of crap. What I mean is when Gerard goes, is it natural for some of these players to immediately um, kind of lose that? Now Goldson's obviously came out and he's made quite a lot of people angry um, with his comments after the game. What I will say is, yes, it's a feeling that we do not believe any Rangers player should have. If you've lost any sort of hunger after one trophy, then... You yeah, Rangers isn't the place for you. Let's face it. However, at the same time, I think the the complete backlash in these directions been a bit OTT. I, I do actually think, in essence, him coming out and saying that in an interview is completely out of the ordinary, and his honesty should, in a way, be commended as well. Because if he hasn't came out and said that, it doesn't highlight the clear issue that we have in the dressing room. And it doesn't highlight that for our new manager coming in. So he came out and said that in an interview. Whether we're disgusted, which a lot of us are, rightfully so, we shouldn't be losing hunger. However, the fact he's came out and said that, it's actually probably a blessing because if that's what our dressing room's looking like, then Gio immediately comes in and, and knows that's something we need to we need to uh, remedy immediately. I think we're the... I think we Goals and honesty, and like fair dues, it is different from what we would usually come to expect. Like uh, in modern football, it's usually you know, all of these things happen, or we go again, we need to work up. Blah, blah, blah. He was completely honest. Why I think he's got so much backlash is of player he was describing, they've lost hunger, they're going through the motions. If I was to, before this interview, if I was to ask you to name a player, um, who fits into that mould, Connor Goldson's going to be one of them. So it's, it's really different if he's almost Roy the Rover starting to throw the team back throughout the season, but that's been a criticism level to him before Sunday. So I think it's, for me, it was almost like, um, you know, he was trying to distance himself from that camp when he's firm, firmly in that camp. See, I don't, I don't see it like that. And I actually think that the backlash, if, if if Connor Goldson's standing there and giving that interview with three years left in his contract, the backlash isn't as severe as what he's got. We're talking about anger from fans who are frustrated that he's not signing a new deal. Potentially, he wants out. These are these are certain things that have attributed to the severity of the backlash. I'm not defending the feelings that he's got or the players in the dressing room have, because it's obviously pretty depressing if that's the way our dressing room feel after one trophy in the last uh, three years as a group. That is depressing. However, what I won't go against him for is actually having the, the honesty to say this in an interview and highlight that this is an issue. I think it was interesting in today's press conf- conference, McGregor was asked about it. He was clearly pretty annoyed being asked about it. He, he dodged the question which, again, I understand why you would do that. I was saying this at a press conference about tomorrow's game. However, it is a, it's a big question. It's a loaded gun question. It's one that we deserve an answer because if you're telling me that our dressing room aren't hungry enough to get more trophies, then that is a huge issue and that should be the number one thing that uh, Gio's got to address. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he is by some of the things he said. Yeah, and I think... I don't know, I, 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 I get the idea that as a fan that this um, these issues are now publicly out and open, okay, and we want to know that. But I don't think we were a million miles away from knowing that, from knowing that these players look less hungry, they have less motivation. I just feel like it's, whether we wanted to hear it or not, but for Golson in that position, I feel like he's just made life hard for himself and the players around him. So I, I don't really understand why he said it. Uh, so whether it was right or not, I think it was a, a bit of an old goal for him. But then, for all we know, I mean, our manager's just left as well. Now, reasons, who knows, I reckon it was family. However, if Gerard has left to 
do something in his career and he's lost, he has lost a bit of hunger, despite his interview back in May when we left the, the title. If he has somehow lost hunger in that kind of space of six months, then of course that's going to feed down to the dressing room as well. So who knows that's where it may have started. And as I say, Goldson's just coming out and saying it. Yeah, he's saying it in the press. He's getting that air in the dirty laundry, I guess. However, at the same time, it is a good thing that we as fans are now aware of this because we should be aware of that sort of um, feeling in the dressing room and certainly a new manager should be as well. So, look, hopefully it's addressed. It needs to be addressed. And anyone who certainly feels like that after a few weeks under Geo, then yeah, let's let's get them moved on because that's not the mentality that we want at Rangers. Of course, it's not. We're winners. We're a winning club. That's what we do. That's what we're here for. So if you're losing hunger after one trophy, then get to fuck. Amen to that. Um, on a on a Gio himself, he's like I'm. I'm, I'm all lost. Was to to big up his press conferences far too much because it's very seldom an actual press conference for someone or like a, a manager at like Rangers Football Club away saying the wrong things or just up, you know top level he's maybe a trend all that kind of stuff. So what I say has been an out and out outstanding press conference I've never seen before. There's probably a lot of the stuff you would expect, but he did still impress. The, um, He's probably had a bit more of that you kind know, of steel look determination around him than uh, well being calm and collected. I, I wasn't quite expecting that. I always for him of, as a bit of a flair player, even though he was in kind a of defensive midfielder. Always, you know, this young. I remember in Rangers this young player coming through, and then I, I never really. Does that make sense? I never really, really had that level headed. This um, attached to him. It makes sense what you're saying, but watching these first couple of interviews slash press conferences, I'm absolutely not surprised that that's what he's like. If you watch, and again, I'll, I'll go back. I'm not trying to generalise Dutch people as a whole, by the way, but <laughs> when I'm when I'm when I'm looking at some of the famous, especially Dutch managers, specifically ones he's either played under. Or worked under when you look at guys like uh, Rijkaard, uh, Ronald Koeman, Dick Advocat. These are all very much managers who are very cool, collected, calm uh, in their press conferences. I think that's how he's going to be. I don't think we're going to see the utmost of passion or anything in those or anything extravagant. Not that he won't feel that. I think he is going to be very emotional that kind of guy. I'm just saying I think when it comes to press conferences, it's very much just business as usual. He'll answer the questions that are there and he'll move on. We're not going to um, see or hear anything that, you know, that uh, out of the ordinary. And I like that. I do like that. I really like that, that it's just, it is what it is. It's almost, you know what, see, see when press conferences are almost just... <sighs> I'm trying, to, I'm trying to express what I'm, I'm meaning here, just not boring, just that professional. They do it, they're not making headlines, do the job, you're in and you're out. The fans are hearing what they want to hear about the game or the post match, pre match, whatever, you're in and out. I think Gio's just going to give us that. Is that it? He'll do his talking on the pitch and on his training ground. And that's you know, the point I was alluding to there that is, I didn't quite expect that, but I'm absolutely delighted that I've seen it because it's. You've gone on to the point you made about Lampard was to replace Gerrard. You've got that big name factor. Uh, you you still do have this big name factor with Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. Uh, in world football, Gerrard's a more famous name. But if you look at a game of shows your medals and Van Bronckhorst does very, very well and he's not a nobody. But he backs that up with winning five uh, five trophies with Feyenoord. You know, and the most important one was... Uh, Title after 18 years, so it's uh, very much um, not not in an arrogant way. He was very much coming across that you know I know what I'm capable of, um, I know the job I need to do, and I'm confident I'm going to do it. And the message to the players is, you know, if you don't have that hunger, then you've got to have a very tough manager. And you've managed to take your balance of saying the right thing, saying what needs to be said without blowing smoke up his own ass. Yeah, like he won five trophies at Farnham. Now, 
the league yeah, after 18 years that's big achievement obviously he's then won two cups and two super cups now the super cups I guess kind of like the community shield in England right we don't really have a super cup not sure look at it look he's got five trophies I think that's great he comes with a bit of pedigree I think he still has a lot to prove as well I guess my worry would be after that kind of winning the league with Arnold he didn't back that up where another league until he left so what I mean is obviously one thing we need at Rangers is consistency we need to win trophy after trophy so as long as he can deliver that of course we're all happy he's coming into a group of players where we are top of the league where we were in the semi-final with the um, league cup we're in the latter rounds of the Scottish Cup and then really tomorrow hopefully we'll see ourselves in the last 16 playoff of the, the Europa League so we're in a good place and and that's where he's not coming into it, it, it's got to be a hard thing coming into a group of players yes we can absolutely improve but what I mean is we're not we're not at the lowest of the low we're not at the low ebb so that's got to be different whereas when he comes into final they haven't won the league for 18 years so I, I do think it's different it's a different ball game and it'll be interesting to see how we, how we, how we fare I tell you what I like the look of Roy McKay it's like he does not take any prisoners by the way on the, on the training ground as well I've always wanted something like Roy McKay. I've always seen him being at Rangers, albeit this dream started like 22 years ago when he was <laughs> made up front for Bayern Munich. I always thought he'd be brilliant at Rangers, but I've got my wish 20 odd years on. Um, I really like that, the the, the comment again, uh, the tips off of the circus, um, and it very is much like, to, don't fuck about, let's get this done. Yeah, I don't know. I still don't know if that was at Kent specifically or if it was somebody said it might have been Barker out a shot. Anyway, but yeah, absolutely. I think possibly looking training, stick to the basics. And actually, if you've watched today's open training session as well, we do very much seem to be focusing right now on the basics. I think what Gio's knows and he's kind of alluded to in his press conference is I've had two days in the training pitch. Look, I think the players know what direction I'm trying to go in. Um, and we'll maybe see some changes in philosophy maybe a bit on Thursday. But I think also a lot of that chat might be with uh, within the, the four walls. Whereas out in the training pitch, I think he wants to see the basics. He wants to see how our players play, fitness levels right now. That sort of thing. Two days is nothing. So I'm kind of not surprised to see that, that basic training. If that is basic, I'm not a coach, I don't know. But it looks quite basic, but I can see probably why. Um, and it looks like he's got a good support staff. I saw we were linked to another guy from Antwerp, um, Seb Jacobs. Uh, so I don't know if he's going to be one of the, the backrooms coming in that Ross Wilson was maybe talking about. And I, I still don't know if Van Gastel is going to be coming in. I think there's chat in January. So look, it looks like he's building his backroom staff pretty well. The training sessions look good so far. And Gio looks fucking phenomenal in that training gear. Oh, he does. He does. Welcome home, son. Um, the another thing for the last last bit on his press conferences is, and I think it kind of alludes into tomorrow as well. As he he spoke about, you know, this is this is players the players' chance to for a clean slate, whether that's um, to show why you were in the team before, or if you weren't in the team, show why you'd ever start. Um, I think that's very healthy for 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 any football player. If you want to be at a club, if you want to be performing at a club, if you're in the jersey, then you you should always be, you know, going 110 percent, playing your game to the top of your ability in that jersey. But if you're if you're to want to come in, you need to be that guy. So healthy competition is, but that's what you need in a winning squad. If we didn't have that before, then I think this will all the time under any manager. Managers will have the players that they trust more than others, and that's only natural. It's natural in any in, uh, human relationship, any working industry. But honestly, this is if, if any player, others, if you're on a goal to know, really, this is your chance to get in the team. Yeah, I think it's you always see up to people saying when uh, ex-players say when a new manager comes in of course some 
some players will be a bit disappointed because the manager going out is one that favoured them, but then other players have a real kind of shot in the arm because they're like, right, this is again my chance to prove myself. And do you know what? It was interesting watching that open training today. See if you watch Scotty Arfield, his head is down. Like his head is down and just doing what he's doing. Like, see if you watch it. Watch the video of the open training. He is clearly like, nah, this this is a good chance for for me. Look, I know he was come back into the team and he had maybe a start under Gerard in the last couple of weeks, but he was he was kind of cast out a wee bit over the last kind of month or so, I know. Um, so I, I feel like for him, that's a big thing. So there's no doubt there's going to be other players that are feeling the exact same as him, whereas there'll be others that, you know, Gerard liked. Sadly, I think we're definitely going to lose. People keep talking about Kamara and Ken. I will be astounded if it's Joe Aribo that's not away in January to Aston Villa. I think he will be the person that Gerard's going to come in and buy rather than a Kamara and Kent. I think Joe, Joe Aribo for me would be a devastating loss. I think he's been unbelievable this season. I think he's been the most consistent player over the course of the season and that would be a massive loss. So listen, there's also potential for comings and going in January, of course there is. But yeah, look, up until then, these next kind of five, six weeks, whatever, players have to be working their arse off to impress the new manager and if they're not, get them to fuck. Going into tomorrow then, um, having said all of that, I don't see the wholesale changes where Patterson and Bassey both play full back. Stephen Kelly comes in in middle of the park, Parker and Sakala up front, and Robbie McCrory. And, um, there's, a lot of fan, there's a lot of fans I'm exaggerating there, obviously, but a lot of fans want wholesale changes. There will be changes tomorrow, I think. Um, and the end after a deal getting a couple of games, but probably not as wholesale as people would like. First of all, Tavernier and Golson, did they stay in the team for you? Absolutely, yes. Totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. Captain and vice captain, stalwarts, no way. And, and especially our kind of, I guess, weakness in defence anyway in the Europa League scenario. If you drop Goldson anyway, I mean, what we playing Bassett at centre back? Do you know what I mean? But, so no, it's look Goldson Tav will start. I think that I still think when it comes to Patterson, I still think we're doing the right thing with him and bringing him in if and when he's nineteen, he's class. He will get more game time, but I think the clambering to just get him every game starting over a captain who still comes out with an unbelievable goal in his history is just fucking nonsense. Seeing that, yeah. see, see in the Patterson Tavernier one, see, see that way when somebody you don't know makes a very good point and you go out your way to not acknowledge the point just because you don't like them. And I feel like that way the folk who since the first game of the season have been saying Patterson over Tavernier. Because it's been nonsense um, that he Patterson is your number one right back. But after Sunday, I do think, you know what, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too upset if Tavernier dropped to the bench. And that's just for form reasons, I think. Um, I, I wouldn't drop Golson because we don't have the cover there, but with Patterson, it might be a chow. I was kind of, kind of annoyed at myself because I then look as if I'm falling into this herd mentality who have been wanting Tavernier out since day dot. And can I also just point out, by the looks of it and by the murmurings, we're very unlikely to keep a hold of Patterson for a long time regardless. So this whole playing him anyway, I mean, he's in the shot window because he, he's Scotland's best right back at this moment in time. That doesn't mean he's Rangers. Tavenier is still our Premier right back. He's still a Premier player. Tavenier is, for me, the, still the top two most important players in our squad. I don't think we should just bring in parts and physique it. So, yeah, anyway, Golds and Tavernier, they start tomorrow. McGregor, and I think this McGregor is... probably as well, despite some of his errors in the last few weeks. Yeah, and I, but I think, to be completely fair, if if McGregor was to come in for McGregor or Parson was to come in for Tavernier or Bassey even in for Barisic, say, 
think it's fair to separate, okay, being dropped by a game doesn't mean you're no longer acknowledged as a Premier player. The best players in a squad can have spells off of form. Last season, there was plenty of players who had spells off of form, but at every point where somebody was having a dip, there was another eight or nine who were staying consistent. This year, we don't have that luxury, so I don't think even if... Um, and uh, For the record, I don't think Arsenal plays tomorrow. I would maybe like to see him play. I don't see the, I don't see the manager doing that, but if he was the drop having there, I don't think that's an admission that Arsenal's the number one right back. Listen, Gio's coming in, he's our new manager. Tomorrow's his first game in charge. He needs to hit the ground running. You don't do that as a new manager coming into the, your new club and put in youth because fans are wanting youth to start or parts to come in. Or, that is not going to happen. I would be very surprised if there was lots of changes from Sunday's team. It's just Sunday's team, they're going to get a rock out of their ass. I don't think there'll be a lot of changes. I think Gio goes with most experienced players. He needs to lean on them and he'll find out from them what they're worth and what they're worth is to him. I think he'll go with a relatively similar lineup. However, he's obviously got his own philosophies. We might see a, maybe a wee bit of different uh, way of playing in terms of attack, press, and those sort of tactical um, platitudes of the game. But I don't see these wholesale changes tomorrow, no way. Behind yeah, that, coming back in. And uh, I think uh, I, I, there was a lot of. A lot of moans and groans when he came on on um, on Sunday, and I think he was the right player at the wrong time. I think he was the kind of player we needed that game um, from the start. I think the damage was really done, and the heads were far too down. Um, the time he did come on, but I think with with, with teams that were always going to attack us, uh, we needed when we were backing on the break, we had to do it quickly and get get the right passes played and. And Jack is brilliant at bringing the ball from, from deep and either playing the, the right pass forward or carrying it forward. I see him coming in tomorrow. Um and I, you know, I, I don't know I don't know if it's Davis or Ramara he drops for. But I do see him and the will definitely be in the midfield tomorrow with um with a Davis or Lundstrom. Uh, I do see a bit of change in the midfield. I I don't Look, I love Ryan Jack. I just don't know if he gets he comes in. I don't no, I don't think so. I think um midfield to front when we've you know, Davis Lund- Lundstrom, Kamara, Rebo I don't know, Haji. Um I don't know how we'll look tomorrow, honestly. We've got, look, we've, as always, we've got a few options. It would just be interesting to see who Gio goes for tomorrow because uh, who he picks tomorrow is not going to be tactical, in my opinion. It's going to be more who he thinks are the, maybe the best players immediately, the ones, as I say, he, he's got to hit the ground running. So I think we'll see a strong lineup. I think it won't be too different from Sunday. But listen, we'll see. I don't like making these predictions because um, Gerard made me look like a fanny quite a few times as well. So um, we'll just see. We'll just see what happens, right? I totally agree with you. He has to hit the ground. I don't necessarily see that being the carbon copy of Sunday. I do see some changes. Back to the earlier point, players are... The players... Um, Maybe haven't they been getting too much game time or been in and out. Um, or like that, Yanis Hadji, for example, um, he's he's impressed. He's impressed me a lot over the, over the last few months when he's came on, but he's never really nailed in a starting uh, a starting place in the in the lineup. I do see some changes, and I think you're right there. It won't be ba- it won't be too tactical. It will be based on what he sees, who he thinks is up for going and playing the big game. Yeah, because if, if Gerald's in charge tomorrow, I think we'd probably maybe be able to guess more of a lineup. I, I think Hadji would have played tomorrow if Gerald was in charge. Whereas we don't know what G was thinking. And I guess it probably sounds silly when we say, oh, it's not going to be tactical. I, I don't think, think people take that maybe the wrong way. I just mean that I think he will go predominantly with if he thinks our strongest players are. And now we can mould them into what philosophy he wants to play going forward. 
but then obviously you know you don't know if if well is is the Dutch philosophy goes and more uh, more attacking and maybe a bit more pace. Whether it's high press or what, we, you might see our fast players, you might see us a Sakala start. Look, we don't know, and that's why I don't like guessing. Maybe I'll guess when the the second game he's in charge or something like that, but uh, I think I'll keep away for this prediction. But I, I do think Golds and Tav will start. The fence is creaking with the amount of time you're spending that. <laughs> Commit yourself <laughs> either way. Look, goals and tab will start. There you go. I'll, 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 you can you can nail me at that one. Aye, and the fact that McGregor was in the press room, well, it doesn't make um, that they start, but I, I see McGregor starting tomorrow. Um, aye. Um, so on to the predictions then. So we couldn't predict a lineup between us. How do you see tomorrow night going? I don't know. I really don't know. It's. Uh... Look, new manager, new era. You want everything, everything to go right. But I, I don't know how much as well. Like obviously we're playing Prague and the history, the history already. Not just with Spa, but then Slavia, and then that's the first time we've had either all come to a home fans. And I don't know, is there going to be a display? Obviously, we've then got. Something we should be really proud of, our manager, our captain, our vice captain, um, are all players of colour as well. And I think that's something we should be really proud of as a club. Uh, we are open to all, I don't care what anyone says. Uh, and, you know, that I'm not saying that should be a catalyst because it's a shame we have to even remotely discuss some of the behaviours of fans of, of other clubs and things like that. But um, I really hope Ibrooks like, is absolutely bouncing tomorrow for those reasons as well uh, as normal it's a game of football we need to win and again due to his press conference you know he's very calm and collected he was asked that and he just said like we're going to do what we can to win i think that touches on again what we we're talking about you know he's not he's not going to be one that's going to just make headlines or a press conference it was a it was a kind of open yeah, an open gun question that one um and he could have said a lot of things and he just said, nah, do you know what? First and foremost, we're, we're going to make sure we're going to win the game. So, look, it's, I think Ibrooks will be rocking. I really do. I really hope it's going to be rocking. And see if we get an early goal. I honestly think, yeah, we could we could have a really, really good night tomorrow. 2 or 3 now, maybe. Yeah, go through. I'll go uh, solid 2 now, Rangers. And that's us. We, we can play the B team against Leon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's um yeah, you'll see your Parsons and your your McCrory starting then, right? Yeah. So just before we wrap up, Graham, um just wanna ask you like now that we've moved on for Sunday, we're looking ahead tomorrow, just want to talk about how how are we feeling in terms of the new appointment in the rest of the season. Then the reason I ask this is I feel what the last couple of weeks, well a week ago when LB Kenny was in fucking years and you and I were tie to calm him and said, listen, league semi-final, chance to go into the last uh, 30 of the Europa League. Whoever inherits this team, um, whoever comes in to be the manager, is inheriting a, a championship winning squad. This isn't popular to say after Sunday. I'm still feeling... I'm still feeling positive. I think we've made the right appointment and this team is shit out of form. But it doesn't make them bad players. It doesn't make it a bad squad, but the squad needs to be galvanised and I think this is this should be the right appointment to do it. And I don't see this as an uphill. Well, no, I don't want to favour that. It's not mission impossible to go and win the league this year. It'll be a difficult first few weeks, but we're still in a position of strength. I mean, are too positive here, or is that an element of truth? No, I think there's an element of truth. Everyone always talks about new manager bounce. If we get that new manager bounce, I actually think that bounce, so to speak, would carry us on through the season. I think that would take us into the position we need to be in in terms of how we're going to play. And, and I think if we did, we will win the league. I don't want to say comfortably because they're obviously in okay form just now. But 
I think they have their weaknesses that are clear and they'll drop some really silly points along the way. So I think as long as we see consistency and get back to the the way we can play with that new manager bounce, if that comes, then yeah, I think I think your um, your confidence isn't misplaced. And I think to be fair, we've been saying like on this podcast and on like on Twitter when you see fans long, it's been clear since the start of the season this team has needed some partner in their life. We always thought it was going to be a result, a, a game, you know, when you look back in season when there's a season turning game, but that's not what we were needing. We were just needing something more radical like a new manager. Yeah, and as I say, tomorrow's huge anyway, but we've got a new manager. It's a massive game, one that we need to win. There's other off-field stuff going on with this game as well. So I think that's all going to culminate into hopefully a really special night. And it would be after the start we had in this group losing the first two games, if we could be qualified for that for that kind of last sixteen playoff um after the fifth game, that'd be that'd be bloody good. I'm not feeling great about the last 16 playoff against um, third place Champions League teams. However, having that, if you have a look at the group stages and the teams that line me, if we got there, look, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but you know, uh, I like to do that sometimes too. Uh, yeah, look, fingers crossed tomorrow's going to be a good one. And then uh, are we at living Sunday? That's, that's, a, that's a massive game as well, let's face it. Horrible, horrible team to play. It's the, most, it's the most Graham Campbell thing ever. In the week where fans are worrying about finishing the top half of the, the table, you're talking about who we're getting in the fucking last week to play off. Why are you come on this pod? <laughs> Telling you, though, generally, like, if you're as optimistic as I am about a 2 0 victory tomorrow or whatever we're going to do tomorrow, have a look at what lies in wait from the third place teams in the Champions League. Tell you what, though, if you're a travelling fan of European games, we're in for a treat as well, so fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yes, as good a place as any to wrap it up. So, Graham, thanks very much for cheering me up this week. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, cheers for having me. We are the people. We are, and thank you to everybody who's listening. Um, usual, let us know your thoughts. Um, <laughs> you know, if we're being too optimistic, or oh, we need to drop back down the earth, bring us back down the earth. But the future's great. Cheers, Orange. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.